Hey everybody, it's Comic Crack. Um, how's it going, eh? I uh, thought I'd just shoot a little tiny short haulish type video here. Um, the family and I were drawing tonight, so uh, I was playing with uh, some Copic markers that I've had for a hell of a long time, and that's what's colored in those rays there. Um, I don't know, I kind of like the way it sits on the paper. It looks pretty nice. Uh, so we're just playing around, drew that sucker, and then uh, drew this little oddity here, um, which I kind of, I kind of really dig. Um, yeah, just again, just laying down some of that color. The the Copics are really, really neat. Uh, I've I haven't I've had these markers for a long time, and I just haven't really experimented with them too much. I've used them very, very little, but now that I'm kind of getting the hang of them a little more, uh, I think I might be keeping my eyes out for some more. I know they're a little pricey, but um, there's an art supply shop not too far from where I live that I think has uh, fairly good prices on the Copics. Anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look at what we picked up. Um, first thing is... If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that uh, Robin Bougie is one of the perverted Canadians that I just love. Um, I've been a fan of Cinema Sewer since, Jesus, I don't know, early 2000s, probably. Um, he's down to doing one issue a year, and I didn't realize how far behind I was. Um, issue 30 just came out. I think February is generally when he puts the issues out. Um, so I just kind of, his name popped into my head. I don't remember how. And I might have actually seen something on Twitter that somebody else posted or just about his 20th anniversary. So I had a look and found I was behind on some issues. And being the nice guy that he is, he sent me some free smut. Uh, this is a dirty movie called The Love Garden from 1971. Uh, that's pretty great. I'm sure it's great. Um, special Sexy Lady Friend was oh so thrilled about that as she was with all of this perverted sickness. Uh, so this is issue number 28 of Cinema Sewer. So this will be from, what, 2015? Uh, issue number 29 of Cinema Sewer. Pretty great cover there. And then the at least double, whoop, at least double-sized issue number 30 uh, with a fantastic 20-year piece on the front. Uh, there's a really great poster in here as well, uh, which I'll try to show you here. Let me put you down for one moment while I open this sucker up. It's it's too good to pass up. I sent him an email in the off chance that maybe he's got some extra posters lying around um, and if he would sell me one because I'm that kind of collector. I can't bear to take it out of the I can't bear to take it out. So if he doesn't have another poster, I'll probably just end up buying another issue because this really needs to go up in my place. Um, a look at all the covers from 30 all the way back to number one. Um, I've got starting from here. So what is that? Five, six, seven, eight. So issue number nine is the first issue that I have. Uh, and then I've got every other one from then on. These early, early ones. I mean, these two, I was really lucky to stumble onto these two to begin with. Uh, the first ten are, are apparently near impossible to come by. I know I've never seen any of them before, even every once in a while when I do a search on eBay. Um, yeah, so there's that. Good old Cinema Sewer. I've started reading through most of these as well, too. Uh, some really great articles, as usual. 
Um, and then he was kind enough to send me a signed big coloring book called Sugar Spread, which is filled with naked ladies uh, that you get to color in. So there we go. Really good of him. And then today I dropped in on cover to cover while I was out doing some work and found a few books. Um, this is now the third copy of this Freak Brothers number two that I have, but this is a tenth printing, uh, which I don't have. I think the other one I have is a, a dollar price tag, and then the one that's been in my collection the longest is a UK knockabout comics uh, printing of this issue. So that's, it's not in bad shape, it's, it's getting some spine split action going on, but hell, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm all about collecting the multiple printings of these undergrounds now. Um, and then this is Freak Brothers number three, this is the 12th printing, and it's in beautiful shape. And I have three copies of this now too. Uh, both of the others are early, I believe I have a 50 cent cover one of the early early printings uh, not a first printing but second or third or something like that so anyway that's in beautiful shape that one um, he had some anything goes I should have just picked up all six he did have all six uh, fanographics related so I guess from the inside blurb of issue number two uh, fanographics was undergoing some court battles at the time that this came out and they asked a bunch of their friends and creators and artists and writers people who have worked with them before to <clears throat> if they would want to contribute to a six issue mini series where all the proceeds everything that they made from it would go directly to their court case to help pay lawyers fees so they had all sorts of people contributing uh, Jan Sternad, Gilbert Hernandez, Michael T. Gilbert, Alex Toth, Mark Hempel, Alan Moore, Don Simpson, Jack Kirby, and Joe Sinat, uh, Dennis Fujitaki, Art Spiegelman, Sam Keith, and of course Frank Miller submitting some art for the cover. Um, and nobody got paid. Uh, they were all kind enough to donate some work to these six issues. Uh, I believe it's actually no that's not right because I read the Art Spiegelman I read this issue tonight um, and the Art Spiegelman was a reprint from uh, an old underground uh, I, this was on my radar because I was looking for some more Dennis Fujitaki stuff because I really love his art in Dalgoda um, so on that there's a website comics there's some comic database, I'm blanking on the name right now, um, where you can look up creators and you can see everything that they've done in their career. So Fujitaki was one of the guys that I was looking up to find more and this title came up. So it was on my phone and I should have just, like I said, I should have just bought all six. But I didn't. But I know where they are. And then Madballs. The early series from what 1986-ish or something? I think it said inside 1986. Uh, issue number one in beautiful shape. Uh, this is a second copy of issue number three, and this is a second copy of issue number six. But this is a huge upgrade. Uh, the issue number six that I have is is trashed. I think the cover is almost off. It's beat to hell. Um, so this one is an upgrade for sure. And it was a, a buck and a quarter. And then issue number nine. And finally the greatest cover out of all of these. This is the final issue. Issue number ten. It's in not the best shape. But I love that cover. It's just... It's just crazy looking shit right there. Love it. Very, very excited to find these Mad Balls comics. Um, on the Mad Balls note, <clears throat> there's a new toy line coming out. 
Um, I think that it's going to be available at Target. Um, I believe they're doing another comic series as well. There's apparently some animation in the works. But I think the Target toys are out now. Uh, I just haven't been to... Hell, do we even have a Target here anymore? I don't even think we have any Target stores here anymore. Um, I think they all folded. I know the one right by our place folded. Anyway, if you're lucky enough, uh, grab yourself some Mad Balls. Check them out. And then finally from Adventure Comics uh, is this Jeremiah series. And I know that I had some issues of this. I didn't know that <coughs> I had these two specific ones. I was stupid enough to not look on my phone for these. Um, I searched my phone for Mad Balls and I searched my phone for other things. But I just decided, no, no, I don't recognize these covers. There's no way that I have them. So I didn't even bother looking on my phone app. Lo and behold, I have them. But that's okay. Now I've got stuff to put in the giveaway pile. Um, <coughs> so it was a two-issue series or part of the continuing story. And this is both of those issues, issue number one and two. Um, the art is fantastic. I want to say uh, Rez has been... Rez has talked about this, but I know Earl Grey has at some point, but I'm pretty sure Rez has talked about this one as well. I don't know. Anyway, there you have it, ladies and germs. A little bit of comic goodness from me to you. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll talk to you.